Hello, hello, hello. We're getting participants coming and joining us. This is lovely. Hello, hello. Hello, AJ. Hello, Tara Lee. Hello, Michael. It is a pleasure to see all of you, or at least see your, your uh, names here in the, in the chat. Uh, I am going to just kind of get ourselves started here. The doorbell will ring for a little bit longer. We're going to give it uh, just a few minutes here, um, or not quite minutes, uh, sorry, let's say a few seconds here, just a little bit longer. The chat is open. I am getting everything set up. Um, so feel free to go ahead and use the chat as well. Do, do, do. We're gonna move that down to the bottom. You know, I do so many Zoom calls um, and what I, uh, I never get a chance to actually attend too many, but this the last, uh, last couple of weeks, I've been attending a lot more and, um, and seeing how, how things are actually showing up in the, in the, the rooms. Um, it's actually gonna make me change uh, the way we format this a little bit because I do want you to see um, as, as much of the screen as possible. Um, and I didn't realize that uh, when I have some of these these windows open and everything, they actually block out uh, a lot of uh, a lot of information. So we're gonna just kind of maximize my screen without having to um, block out too much information here. All right. Welcome, welcome. Um, and like I said, the chat is open, so feel free. This is your time. Um, so if there's any questions you have or anything, please feel free to, um, to reach out, let me know. Um, just put a comment in the chat as well, uh, because I want you to make this as relevant as possible. Uh, I was telling a few people, I said, ironically, I, uh, I wish I had chosen a different topic a little bit, uh, but the topic was actually chosen a month ago. And we all know what happened, what was the difference between a month ago and what is today. Um, so I want to make this still very relevant and timely to what we have going on. Um, in a two weeks, we've actually upped our webinars to every two weeks right now. Um, our next webinar is going to be around how to actually make better phone calls um, because phone calls are a big thing right now. And, and I have a bunch of articles and everything. I, I don't know about you, but I have found myself to be more creative over the last couple of weeks. <laughs> Ironically, um, I do miss standing on stage. I was having, my husband was joking around with me over the weekend. He goes, you thrashed around so much the other night. He's like, while you were sleeping, he's like, I thought you were awake. And I said, no, I was dreaming about speaking on stage and I said I miss it so much <laughs> so I, I do I do miss being in person for everybody but it is nice to, to be able to see you here um, we're gonna have I think this is gonna be our last doorbell that we have coming through um, and we will get started uh, do 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 let's just end all of the, oops I lost my oh let's just pull this up again I lost my presentation where did you go presentation there it is. Okay, welcome, welcome. Um, this one is uh, is a classic one. I enjoy this one. So one of the things you will learn about. Um, but what I teach um, when it comes to sales is around the power of questions. Um, questions are very valuable and the more, uh, the better the questions they are, the more you have in order to be able to discover about your client. So for those of you that are beginning April and you're thinking to yourself, you're like, oh my goodness, like what am I going to do? Like how am I going to restart new sales conversations if they kind of have fallen off? There might be, let's be honest here, there may be, if you've been nurturing certain clients, you've been speaking to prospects and the, the deals are not happening. I want you to be aware that number one, there are going to be certain deals that are just not viable for the time being. I do not want you to take that as that they're gone forever. Anytime a client says, uh, no, the time isn't right or no, I can't right now. Um, it's no, I can't right now. Not no, I can never do this again. So at which point then you're going to restart the, the conversation. You are likely not going to be where you were in the sales conversation from where you dropped off. You're probably going to have to move yourself back in terms of where you are in the sales cycle. I'll talk to you a little bit about that when we show you the sales, the sales conversation. The other thing to realize is that this is also a great time to reach out to people. Like embrace this because he, and this is one of the reasons why in a couple of weeks I'm going to be doing another webinar specifically around phone calls. 
calls is because for most of us, we came from like an office environment or a co-working environment or something else. And we were used to just seeing people on a daily basis. We were used to be able to have small chat in the kitchen or the coffee machine or something. Even if you were a very lone wolf type of person, you still were interacting with people. And now that all of us are having to work from home and create these like work from home environments, we're craving, like we're seriously missing this personal attention. Yes, even the introverts actually do miss a little bit of personal attention. It's not that they don't like to be around people. It's that they crave intimate conversations. Now is your time that you should be reaching out to people just strategize with them, just connect with them. Now I am going to be, I did a webinar two weeks ago. Um, it was so popular that I actually was requested by four different organizations to do it for their communities. I'm doing it three times this week and another time next week, if you can also join that. And that is on the 15 reasons to reach out if you're unsure that now is the time to do it. Um, and so I'm going to give you a lot of information. Uh, if you need uh, links on that, just um, send me a message in the chat and I will provide you links. We're going to be doing it on uh, Wednesday. Um, uh, Wednesday morning at 11, 10, 11, 10, something like that, 11, um, Thursday twice. Um, so once for Business Link here in Alberta, um, two times for one for a uh, women's entrepreneurship group out of South Carolina. Uh, feel free to attend that. She's given me access to allow anybody to attend that. Um, the other one is through Inc. Magazine. They have a community through uh, solopreneurs, um, anyone who has companies of less than five employees. Um, Inc. Magazine asked me to, to reach out and do those ones. So that's going to give you another opportunity to learn a little bit more. But questions, 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 people. So go out and reach out to those, um, to those individuals. But let's get started here. So my sales background, um, I, I want to kind of set the tone here. I, I know what it's like to sell during really hard times. And I was actually working for Xerox during the last great recession of 2008, 2009. I truly believe that this one is going to be even harder than the last one, um, only because there's a couple of things. So, I mean, we could talk about the, the whole work from home environment. I want to be very clear here. This has little to do with what's going to happen over the next 30 and 60 days, where a lot of people are just it's not going to be in the office. It's the ramifications that are going to happen after that 60 days. This is more so about the Great Recession and what that was like to deal with. So back then I was actually working for Xerox and, uh, and despite that, despite having everybody, you know, pull back on all of their costs, pull back on everything. This was about still becoming one of the top reps. And it wasn't because I was out there and boiler rooming it and being like, Hey, you need to buy, Hey, you know, get aggressive, you know, whatever it takes, you know, this is actually quite the opposite. The people that were actually approaching their clients. Um, actually found themselves in a harder situation because their clients were turned listening to to the conversations that I'm having I am genuinely concerned about this and so the people so when a client like that would receive a phone from someone they knew that you, you pick it up once. And when you get that phone call, you're like, I really don't want to deal with you. And so what set me apart was that I would actually contact my clients and I said, listen, let's 30, 60, 90 days. What's even happening beyond that? What's, what's your future look like six months, a year from strategize on this. What do you need in order to make that happen? And because of that, that ultimately, actually, ultimately allowed the clients to become much more vulnerable, much more open, much more transparent. And so we'll talk about what are some of the questions that you can even ask when you're going out there, but reach out and ask your clients if, you know, sales aside, put the sales off to the side for now. Let's just start planning on what it looked like. Now, the other big times that I ever, I ever faced where we were dealing with a lot of uncertainty was in 2000. even said they're even lower than they were then. But in 2015, um, oil prices dropped significantly. And I remember one of my clients, I was working for Pure Later at the time. And one of my clients was Imperial Oil. And they said, listen, Place. Like we're cutting costs, we're we're do, and they actually want to cancel the relationship. And instead of allowing them just stick just creative deals, we said, okay, well, what? 
What are some of the other services that you're using outside of us? And how can we house all of this? Now that ended up becoming one of the best deals that year. And we, it, we actually didn't even lose it. We actually made more money out of Imperial Oil than had we lost, but we came to the table creatively. When the client called us up to say, we want to cancel your contract, we said, whoa, Okay. I hope you can hear me now. Um, I got a notification saying Zoom wanted to, to restart my computer because it was struggling with audio issues. Let me know. Just put in the chat um, if, you, if you can hear me. Um, just say yes, Kim. Oh, yeah. Dale says you're back. Okay, good. Thank you. Um, so, yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I just want to make sure that, uh, yes. Thank you, Ron. Michael. Um, so there's going to be a lot of different times. What I, what I encourage you to do is, I mean, enter those, those conversations with empathy and with emotional intelligence. Yes, I understand you're dealing with hard times. Yes, I understand this can be quite difficult. And how can we help you, right? Before I just agree to let you constantly cancel the contract, before I just uh, let, uh, agree to let you, you know, stop payments or something, let's just have a discussion first and foremost. The best thing may be, to cancel the contract or to be able to relieve payments. I'm not saying that that don't ever do that. I've done that for myself in the past. Usually the conversation goes something along the lines of like, what do you need right now? Well, and then when the client tells me, I, I think about it and I say, okay, if I, it, I'm not saying that I will, but if I did this, would this make you like, you know, tremendously happy? Would this make you like, you know, put our, like put us in a great relationship? And if the client then agrees, then I will, uh, I will go to whatever they recommend. Um, that's kind of outside of your 10 questions to ask. In in, in, okay. Thank you very much, AJ. I appreciate that. Um, so let's talk about what this looks like. Okay. Oops. So KO Advantage Group, who are we? So we provide consulting. We, cons we consult um, on sales training. We provide sales training uh, at a Fortune 500 type level. So companies like massive companies will hire us to, to train their teams. And we are always grateful to be able to have those relationships. But who do we really service? We service people like you. We service the small business owners, the entrepreneurs, those that are just growing, those that are like, listen, I am exhausted. I am tired. I just don't even know where my next dollar is going to come. I have no idea how I'm even going to pay my staff at the end of this month because I have no idea. We take away that stress and that anxiety because we give you a sales process that works. It, it is, we are the only results guaranteed company that ultimately does this because it works so many times. But the other thing is it gives you more empowerment as well. As a business owner, as a leader, you know exactly how much you can invest, where the money is going to come from, how soon is it going to close in your books? L listen, I mean, today is April 6th. And I can tell you with 80% certainty what I know we're going to close in April. And I promise you the, the answer is bigger than zero. Um, where I can tell you with 80% certainty what we're going to close in April. And if you are not feeling that level of certainty before the end of April on April 30th, this is why you need us. This is why I'm so glad you're here on this webinar today. We do this in a whole bunch of variety of ways. Um, but the biggest thing is that we, we just make it as easy as possible for you to follow the formula. So why does this matter? Is because number one, value is always created. It is not earned. And let's talk about this right now more than any other time. Value is shown through your interactions. Okay, I'm gonna be honest with you right now. If you have ever had a client that you have always dreamt of wanting to deal with, if you've had a relationship that you have said like, you know what, if they would be my client, I would be honored. 
right now is the time to contact them. I had a, a conversation with a gentleman uh, this morning and he's like, Kim, he's like, after I spoke with both you and Dale, so Dale's on the call as well. Dale works for our team. Um, he's going to be helping any one of you just kind of strategize. We, we're doing this like free of charge. We just want you to, you know, plan on what this is going to look like. But he says, after my conversation with Dale, he's like, I felt so inspired. He's like, it made me realize that there's more I could be doing right now. And he goes, and the, the two weeks that I talked to Dale and to when I talked to you, he's like, you know, I have had more conversations, more relationships. He's like, I feel like I already have like deals that are going to be happening in the next 60 days. And I'm like, oh my goodness, people are picking up the phone. People are wanting to interact. And now is your time to ultimately reach out to those people because the, the value that you want to, the value that you want to create with this is, is unbelievable because when you show somebody that's like, listen, I want to help you just plan in the future. I want to help you do more for your customers. I want to help you make more money. And if you're even unsure about how to bridge that conversation, but what between what you do and how you're going to help your customer make more money, get on the phone with Dale. He's a magician when it comes to connecting the dots with this, but people ultimately want to work with those who want to help them, not those who are going to charge no more, not those who say, well, we're just the best, or here's all the companies we've worked for in the past. Isn't this amazing? It's like, yeah, but what does that do for me? Now is your time to shine, shine premium value provider because you are a premium value provider and you're able to do this. So a recent example of this is, um, is actually right now I'm currently working with, um, with two different companies. We're kind of in the engagement stage right now of the own, of my own sales cycle as a buyer, right? One of the things I look at is during times of, of economic um, downfall and recessions and everything, there's a few things that the experts say. They say, number one, reduce as much of your operating expense that is not bringing you back money. If it is an operating expense in your business, see if you can either eliminate it or significantly reduce it. And the other thing they say is number two, save your people, save your people. If you have employees, if you have contractors, because the morale that you create, because you're able to weather the storm is going to pay you dividends. If you have to get rid of somebody, be very transparent on why that is the case and how it is going to make your company stronger by eliminating those people. The third thing they say, is double down on marketing and sales efforts. Right now is the time that you need to be investing in understanding sales process, marketing, ad spend, whatever it is. So we know our, our sales process, we got that. So the other thing I said, okay, well let's, let's double down on marketing expense. I need to go ahead and I need to start pushing out ads. I need to start like spending a ton of money in marketing, like all these, you know, how are we gonna help bring more people into the funnel? How are we gonna have more conversations with people? So I, I reached out to my network. I said, who do you know, who do you know? And a few people said, oh, here's a couple companies. And I reached out to several, let's be very clear. I reached out to several companies. I'm engaged with two of them right now. And we're still in the, the engagement. So the things that I knew is that, yes, I want to spend money on ads. Now people are going to typically say, well, what is your budget? Here's the thing. I don't know what my budget is. I, I have very, like, actually only a couple times have I ever spent money on ads and it like went, and it like, like it was a terrible, terrible expense. I, I am not an ad person. I am really good at sales. I am terrible at marketing. I know where my limitations are. So the money I've spent on ads in the past is not a condition on how much I'm going to be willing to spend on ads this time in the future. But I have no idea what my ad spend is. I don't know if $50 is going to get me there. I don't know if $5,000 is going to get me there. Let's just see what they come back with. I know that I need something. I know that to not take and put um, investment into my business right now is going to like end up, you know, creating huge chasms and like ca uh, cavernous areas inside my business. Um, if you are a small business owner and you are in Canada and you are at least two years, there is the um, Canadian relief benefits, right? That your bank will allow you to have, it's essentially like a line of credit and everything figure out how to capitalize on this. It's $40,000 um, that you'll have available, whether you choose to use it or you choose not to, it is better to have and not need than to need and not have. Go and find this out. The other nice thing about this is that if you end up paying back at least 30,000 of the $40,000 by the end of December, 2022, the government will allow you to have the last 10,000 completely forgiven. So that is $10,000 that is just sitting there. 
right? Now, best case scenario, figure out what you're gonna spend $10,000 on. We're, we're spending it on marketing. Okay, so I'm going ahead now, I'm shopping around. And I'm like, okay, tell me what you have. And two website providers come back to me or what marketing agencies will call them. Two marketing agencies come back to me. The first one says, okay, let's get on a phone call, Kim. And you know, tell me what you need and everything else of this. And I need you to fill out this giant form. Ugh. Can, can I tell you about the annoyance of having to fill out giant forms? It's a make work project. And, and I get why some people will have you do this because if they're willing to take the effort into this, they're showing themselves to be much more committed. Um, but go, I go ahead and I fill out this giant form and everything. The second company comes back to me and they say, listen, Kim, um, you know, let's just have a quick touch point, you know, da, 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 da. I'm going to get you a proposal by Thursday or something. I think it was Tuesday. He was going to get me a proposal by Thursday. Thursday rolls around. I don't hear anything. The following Thursday rolls around. I still don't hear anything on Friday afternoon. So a week and a half later, after he had told me that he was going to send me something, I get an email saying, listen, we're going to get you something by the weekend. And all of a sudden on Sunday night, I get this proposal and it doesn't really tell me a lot. Right now, the other gentleman, he has the, the one who made me fill out the giant form, which is fine we're actually booking another meeting to go through that proposal. But there's still a lot more that can be discovered. So what is the learning from this is that people are getting lazy. They're getting lazy in their sales efforts. And if you really want somebody to invest with you right now, you need to spend the time to get to know them, to understand them, and to ultimately help to nurture them. Am I going to go with either of them? I honestly don't know. I actually might continue to shop around a little bit more because I am not convinced that they understand my needs. And I'm not convinced that they're ultimately going to help me. I think that, you know, really what it is, is here's the amount that you can pay. This, is, this may or may not be the result. So I'm going to show you how can you convince somebody before you get to the proposal stage that you are the right person for the job. So the biggest thing to recognize is that your buyers are going to be on their own journey. You need to respect this process. Your buyer doesn't really know where they are. And it's funny, I was also exchanging a bunch of emails this morning with another gentleman. He works in advertising spend. And uh, the conversations we were having, he's like, you know, it's been amazing. He's like, there's been a ton of people that want to talk to talk about strategy. They want to talk about vision. They want to talk about everything. And he goes, and what I'm realizing right now is that it has been harder to move them from, from the awareness consideration phase into that value discovery phase. And he goes, but knowing where they are in their process, process allows me to know the type of information that I want to provide them. It tells me that I need to spend more time educating people and letting, giving them the information they need, helping them where I can, helping to inspire them. Um, for those of you that are in like leadership and development phases, like today is the day that you need to be contacting all those clients that you want to work with and see if you can offer their teams a webinar, offer their teams, you know, some, some information or something in order to help to educate and show like a sampling of what you can ultimately do. It will help them because it will help their employees get motivated and inspire. It will help you because now you already have your feet in the door with them. But whatever you are, understand where the client is on their own journey so that you can help move them through. So in the sales cycle, the buyer's journey, this top right hand corner, the suspect and prospect side um, is where you're going to be in your sales cycle. Look at uh, in the italicized area, this tells you where your buyer is. And it says the buyer is aware or not aware that there's a problem. Okay, let's be very clear here. Being aware of the problem does not mean like, oh, the problem is I have to work from home. Unless they actually think that this is where they're going to be in six months time, that might be the problem. What the problem typically is for the client is that we should be here. And right now we've like somebody basically threw a wrench in our spokes and we've fallen off our bicycle. And now we got to dust ourselves off and figure out how are we going to get back on the bicycle. The problem is that we were on trend to have one of the best years of, 20, of, our, of our company. 2020 was going to be our breakout year. And right now, everything has come to a screeching halt. That is a problem for them. And while they're trying to reprioritize, because this is what's going on for a buyer's head, everything that we had planned out is no longer significant. The things we were planning on doing at the end of Q3, Q4 are now being moved right now because those are the things that are now becoming priority. Whereas the things that were a priority 30 days ago are are no longer even on our radar. The companies that I'm talking to, so I, I talked to um, learning management systems over the weekend. 
they're busier than they've ever been in their life. Um, I have talked to, you know, online training companies, um, a lot of consultants, a lot of consultants, especially if they're able to start to nurture these relationships now, they're busier than they've ever been. And then there are other companies that are slower than they've ever been. Does that mean that this too shall not pass? No, it means that it shall pass. It's just that we need to rejig everything. But your intention here is just to get the meeting, have the meeting. I was chatting with another woman who said that, uh, her intention is to book meetings in like a month's time. I said, why wait a month? And she goes, oh, I, I, I don't even know. I, why, why am I waiting? I said, there's no reason why you couldn't host a Zoom meeting right now. At least start to get the conversation forward. They might not make a decision for 60 or 90 days, but put the sense of urgency or that immediacy that I need to sell something right now, just put it off to the side for now. Focus on what you can focus on, which is helping your client as much as possible. Now, as we move through them, we're going to get them into lead qualification and value discovery. Get the meeting, get the meeting, get the meeting, and then ask really valuable questions. The difference between selling when you were able to sit down with somebody for a coffee or a face-to-face -face is going to be a little bit different when you're selling over Zoom or in a virtual environment. You need to be more prepared than you've ever been. You need to have your questions listed out. Whereas last time you could usually get around it by small talk or by just like feeling like you can engage or personality wise. People don't have the same attention spans in sitting in front of a computer screen for nine hours a day, right? We're going like, if you're like me, you are sitting from Zoom meeting to Zoom meeting to Zoom meeting to Zoom. Today I am literally from 9 a, I was from 8.30. I am right up until 3.30 and I'm like back to back to back in Zoom meetings. People just don't have that time span. They want to be able to get the same amount of information in 30 minutes or 45 minutes as it would have taken them in an hour. So you have to be ultra prepared. We will at some point talk about proposals and closing the sales. If you are there at this point in time with your clients, do not delay your proposal, but also do not send your proposal via email without discussing us. This was a fatal error of one of those marketing ad agencies that I just discussed. Will I hire him? I don't know. Um, it, and I promise it won't be because he sent his proposal via email. But what I will tell you is having a, a, a proposal sent to me via email does not have the same I care about you and your needs as it does booking a Zoom meeting and walking me through the information and answering any questions I have and having a discussion and a conversation. I'll save that rant for another time. But ultimately, in your sales cycle, the person that owns the, asks the questions owns the conversation. If you are asking the questions, you own that conversation and it is up to you to own it. When you think about this in terms of any type of like cop dramas, cop dramas are a perfect example of this. You'll always have the perpetrator. And if you're like watching Tiger King, like you got this, right? Because like the, the documentarist, you know, is asking Tiger King all these questions and like turning a story into something he wants. But cop dramas are also really good for this because you'll always have the perpetrator inside the interrogation room. They've been handcuffed to the table and they have to sit there. And the cop goes ahead and asks all the questions. Boom, 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 boom. And the perpetrator, because they know what they're doing, they will start to turn around questions. And they will, you know, ask the cop questions and the cop knows what's happening, the psychological trick and throws his hands down on the table and goes, I will be the one to ask the questions in this room. And all of a sudden it's like, oh, okay. Because they know if they're not asking the questions, they relinquish control. If you are fortunate enough to have people reach out to you, find your information, contact you, and you're lucky enough to get on a phone call with him, do not allow them to be the one to ask the questions. Alternatively, do not turn this into, let me tell you everything I have and what other questions do you have? That is a terrible way to host a, um, to, to be able to host a sales meeting. That's not even a sales meeting whatsoever. So ask questions questions. Questions will be your friend. Okay. So the first thing you're going to do when you get on any type of phone call, any type of sales meeting is going to be to qualify your prospects and qualify them again. Because they were qualified once does not mean they are still qualified. If you qualified your prospect 
30 days ago, it does not mean that they're still qualified today. It means that you need to requalify them. Just make sure that the information is still the same or find out what has changed. Every time you meet with a client, every single time, just do a brief requalification. And I'm going to show you how to be able to do that. But really when we're in the lead qualification phase, what you do need to understand from your client is your budget authority need and timeline. We use the acronym BANT, budget authority need and timeline. I stole it from IBM. I never worked for IBM, but I did a lot of research on different sales strategies. IBM created it in 1973. There's a lot of sales opinions that BANT is irrelevant or BANT doesn't work. I don't care. I like it. I find it simple and it's easy to remember and it's easy to use. When we do talk to our clients about budget, we do want to understand not necessarily how much money do you have to spend. That is a terrible question. And it is a terrible question for two reasons. Number one, in the timeliness of where we are right now, nobody has money to spend. Everyone is holding on to every dollar that they possibly can. Nobody wants to spend money. So by asking somebody, how much money do you have to spend? The answer is zero. And unless your service or product offering is zero, then you're, they're going to be completely outside of your budget. Does that mean that they're unqualified? Absolutely not. You just should have asked a better question. There's an old saying that says, if you don't like the answer, you should have asked a better question. Asking somebody, what is your budget is a terrible question. Ask a better question. Authority. Who else is going to be a part of this decision making? If you are working with small businesses, medium sized businesses, or uh, enterprises, this is very critical. Small businesses, you may be dealing with the decision maker or the owner of the company. It doesn't mean that they're the ultimate decision maker. In my business, I am the ultimate decision maker in my business. Now, does that mean that I will only be making the decision? Absolutely not. What kind of leader would I be in that case? I, for instance, we're going to be having immediately after this webinar, we're having a team meeting. Meeting. And we're going to be talking about what are some of the decisions that we're going to be making in our business. And I'm turning to my team and I'm asking them, what do you want to do? Or what is your opinion and everything? I'm the ultimate decision maker, but it does mean that my team has significant influence on that decision. And by not understanding how that works, you might end up not getting yourself the sale because you didn't clarify that need. Okay. We'll talk about need in another time, but the ultimate thing is not that somebody needs your product or service. Okay. Unless you are providing some type of safety equipment, unless you are a manufacturer of PPE, which in which case, I don't even know why you're on this webinar right now, like go and manufacture and like be making money like nonstop. But nobody needs your product or service right now. Nobody needs advertising spend. Nobody needs to spend on leadership and development. Nobody needs a brand new website right now, right? Those are not things that we need. But what do they do? What do they need? They need to be somewhere different than where I am right now. If I stay where I am right now, what will that happen to me in six months? I need to be there. And right now I am here. And if I don't get there, I will not survive. We need to get them there into this moment of, I need to get there in order to be able to continue to have sustainability for myself and for my business. And then timeline. One of the biggest reasons why a deal will be lost or ultimately you will get the decision from a client that says, thank you so much for this information. I will contact you when I'm ready is because you have not clarified timeline. And I will tell you what the right questions are to clarify your timeline as we go forward. So you need to understand what is the experience that your clients will ultimately buy when they invest with you. So I talked about the, the authority portion. Who else is going to be a part of this decision? Okay. We need to find that out, right? Get names, names of people. Now it is okay if you're not engaging with them. Okay. There's a lot of sales cycles where I will be dealing entirely with the influencer and not the ultimate decision maker. For instance, we brought on a client um, down in the States, right? Every, this is before anything ever happened. Sales need to be happening via zoom. Now, if you think that you can just wait until you can uh, be face to face again, this is a wrong time. Because what this is going to do, I promise you, one of the biggest um, positive impacts you're going to see out of what's happening over the next 30, 60 days is that borders are going to open up. You are going to have better access to people across cities, across provinces, across countries than ever before. Because it used to be the case that you would only do a video call with somebody if you couldn't physically be in the same room. Well, 
guess what? Now that none of us can physically be in the same room, we are getting used to video communication, despite the fact that we only live a couple miles or within the same city. And now we're getting used to this. So now it becomes irrelevant whether I am meeting you because you were in the same city with me via this method, or I'm meeting with you because you are on the other side of the country. Your borders are going to open up. Now that said, when I was dealing with, uh, with one of our new clients down in the States, we ended up having this conversation. And the main person I was dealing with was the, the influencer. I never once interacted or met with the decision maker. So it, that was okay. What was not okay was not knowing how the decision making process worked because I ultimately needed to figure out, does this person have to report to somebody else? Does the person that I'm needing to need to get approval from somebody else? Now that was the case. And because I knew how that decision making process worked, I was able to then ask, well, what does that person need to see? What does this have to look like, right? What do we need to present to them? And we were able to ultimately move that entire sales cycle much, much faster. It went from start to finish in less than 30 days. Had I not asked the questions appropriately, if we, literally, if we would have waited one more week for that deal to have closed, I probably wouldn't have got that deal. The deal closed on Friday the 13th. And for most, um, most geographies, everything started to shut down on that following Monday. So we were able to get it closed because I knew how the chain of command was going to work, when they were going to have those conversations, what was going to be the output, how, who else will be a part of the decision, when will you meet with them, when will you find out that information when would you like to see the result? So this is actually the timeline question, which is very valuable in terms of the conversation, not when do you want to get started? Okay, very few of your clients are probably going to want to get started right now unless they have a sense of timeliness and urgency. What they do want is they want to see the result in a certain amount of time. When do you want to see the impact on your teams? When do you want to start to see revenue coming through? When do you want to start to see, um, you know, some other type of ultimate benefit in your company. When is that result going to happen? And by understanding and moving yourself future focus, it does two things. Number one, by getting so future focused, it helps to make the client way more positive, optimistic, and it makes, it takes the pressure off that this is a sale. But the other thing by focusing on the future is in the magic of the sales conversation, because we're focused on something that they want to see a result in the next 60, 90, 120 days, when we start to get to that proposal stage and break them closer and closer, what needs to happen in a month from now, what needs to happen in two weeks from now, oh, that suddenly means that we need to have the deal signed today so that when in June and July and September, when business is really back to normal, now you're starting to see the impacts of this. The other thing to think about yourself is if you physically have to be in an environment where you are actually delivering a product or a service, ask yourself, what else can I provide to nurture that relationship until I can physically deliver that? And is there a way for me to create create a small amount of revenue or a small piece of information in order to help bridge that gap. So even if you couldn't physically deliver it until September, what could you do in August or July or June or May to help build up the excitement level of that client so that they still have an incentive to sign with you today for delivery in September and maybe even you got a deposit or some other piece of revenue coming through. But knowing when they want to see that result will help you to then reverse engineer and backtrack your entire timeline. Whoops. What would this mean for your life or your business? I love this question. I love this question because it is so much bigger than the impact that your service or product provides. You, in the ultimate vision of where you help your clients, it should not be, listen, you're going to use me for your bookkeeping. I'm going to help you do better bookkeeping, ultimately helping you to save on taxes. Oh, okay. How many people are like overly excited by that? Oh my goodness. You mean you get to save me 10% on my tax bill? That's amazing. And maybe you had like really significant taxes where you're like 10% is actually a lot, Kim. Don't make fun of it. But let's also be honest. That also means that we're not going to see that result until April of next year. So that doesn't really make me excited. 
what does make me excited is knowing how I would end up taking that money and reinvesting it. What are some of the things I could do today to help move that forward? What would this mean? When your employees are more motivated and excited and feeling inspired, how is this going to help you maintain a certain level of customer engagement with your clients? When you're able to go ahead and plan and strategize where, what are the steps you need to take in September and October, how does that make you feel more in control of what is happening around you? What does that mean for you? Now, this becomes a very emotionally uh, touching question. It also helps to set up eventually legacy questions, especially if you're dealing with people that are wanting to set up their business for success or maybe sell it or maybe be able to hand it off to their employees. By understanding what this would mean, it will drive to a financial conversation automatically because what is the bigger picture of what this looks like? But also, what does this personally mean to you, right? How is this going to further impact you? Remember, every company ultimately is only in the existence to help make themselves more money. And you could say, well, no, Kim, what about charities, right? They're giving away money. Yeah, but they need to have the money come in in order to be able to spend it. It may not be about the money, but it will be about what the money will do for them to, in order to help them grow, in order to help them get better services to other clients, to other patrons, to other donors, what it will do for them as an organization on the life of all of their employees. Get this to a really big picture. If you need help with that or how to like how to actually bridge that conversation or connect those dots, Dale put his meeting link in the calendar. Book a meeting with Dale. He's a master at this. He will be able to help you. You will leave after 15 minutes feeling like oh, I get it. I get the impact that I'm ultimately creating and that will make all the difference. And when a client does tell you their budget or if they tell you, listen, we can't afford this right now. Listen, we have no budget. Okay. It does not matter. A budget will always tell you what you can afford, but it will never stop any one of us from buying it. It will never stop us. And we could talk about this outside of, you know, what's happening right now, but at, at any given time, when I'm public speaking and I pull up this phrase, I say, how many people have overspent on their budget at any point in their life? And everybody's hands go up. Yeah, I've overspent. And I'm like, okay. So then we have all collectively agreed as society that we will have a budget. And at some point, if the, if the product or service is meaningful enough that we will spend above that. Your clients are no different. And if it is meaningful enough to them, they will find the money and spend on it. It is your job to help turn that into that bigger picture. What will this ultimately mean for you? And all of a sudden, the money will be found. What has changed since the last time we met? Okay, super relevant and super timely right now. Let's not just assume, well, Kim, come on. Like, I'm not going to ask this question because everything has changed. It may not have. It may be for some clients, it's going to be business as usual. For some clients, they're going to be busier than they've ever been. There's a lot of people out there that are super optimistic and super positive. The only difference is they actually feel a little guilty for being super optimistic and super positive because they're like, things are really, really good. There's other people that are like, a lot has change and here's some of the things that we're doing or we just don't even know what to do next <sighs> that is like somebody handing you a wonderful feast and now that they have no idea whether it involves your product or doesn't it, uh, it automatically says I trust you so much that I'm giving you this information that I would love to have your feedback that you know I would love to, I'm just sharing with you this is a great opportunity. The other thing about this is this will adjust where the priorities are in terms of their sales cycles. So like I said, you might have had somebody that wasn't going to invest with you for at least a year, but a lot has changed since the last time we met. And now everybody's priorities have been shuffled around and things that did not seem urgent or important are suddenly urgent or important. Find out where you are and find out where it is, but never assume. Never assume that I shouldn't ask this question. Never assume that is different for somebody or that business is bad or that, you know, the, the levels of chains of command or there's no budget or anything. like assumptions will be the killer of your sales cycle. Because the one thing I can tell you every single time is that anytime I ask somebody something very clearly, it has always surprised me how it is unique and different and individual for that company or how they see it completely differently. So never assume. 
reach out to those really big companies. Like the ones that you're like, you know what? I got nothing to lose because if you have nothing to lose today, you're never like, you'll never be at like this point again. So you might as well say, you know what? This is the difference. This is also the difference between those companies that ultimately end up growing and thriving. There are more millionaires that are created during times of recession than there are during times of boom. And it's because there's a lot of people, they're like, I got nothing to lose. So I might as well go in for gold. And I'm speaking of this from experience. This week we are doing a webinar with like Inc. Magazine. It is a relationship that I've wanted. And I thought, ah, I have nothing to lose. Let's throw a Hail Mary out there. Are you interested? And they said, yeah, actually, yeah, we are. We, we would love that. And I'm like, fantastic. I don't think to myself, who am I? I'm some little small town girl, you know, it's no, just go out there, go out there. The answer is no. If you don't ask the question, unless you ask the answers already, no. So you might as well try for the yes. Okay. What would happen if in six months, if nothing changes, super relevant right now, because right now, not that people are going to expect that this is going to be my life for the next six months. Let's be very, very clear. That is not what they're probably thinking, but what they are thinking is that whatever process we have in our companies right now, whatever we're currently doing with our clients, whatever our employees are currently feeling, whatever it is, that level of anxiety that somebody has, if they don't start to take action, today to improve it or to change it or to update it. If nothing happens in six months, that is going to be big, big issues. There is a reason why Zoom has completely taken off. Yes, video conferencing and everything, but why not Skype? Why not FaceTime? Why not Cisco? There is literally like thousands of other video communication platforms. And yet Zoom was the one that really took off. Why is that? Is because people were like, we need something quick and easy that doesn't take any downloads or uplift times. And if they didn't change that today, that was going to affect them. But how is this going to change them? How is this going to affect their business in the next six months or 12 months? Because another thing is going to happen for a lot of businesses. The work from home capabilities is now going to be something that is going to be a right out of a lot of organizations. It is not going to be the exceptions to the rules anymore. Now you're going to have people that are going to start to get used and like the idea of being able to work from home. And it might not be an all the time thing, but you are going to see more companies start to invite their employees to be able to work one day, two days, three days a week from home. Because now it's like, okay, well, you know, we're already seeing this. So what else is going to change in the next six months? And if they don't make a change today on trying to improve that for when they're back to normal, how is that going to negatively affect them in the next six months? And what would your ideal state look like? What do you want it to look like? Now, this moves you back into that positive and optimistic time frame. We don't need people to be fear mongers. We don't need people to say, this is how bad it's going to be if you're going to change. Okay, there's enough of that in the news. And if, if people are really craving negativity, like let them find the other 99% of sources out there that are already focused on that. Why don't you set yourself apart by being the 1%? The one that is like, listen, how do we help you get there? What If you had a magic wand, what would that look like? I love that question too, because it just, it takes everything and it just throws out of the window, right? If you had no constraints on anything, if you had no limitations, what would it look like for you? And just allow them to dream. The difference between premium service providers and those that are trying to sell transactional business, premium service providers are dream catalysts. We are the ones that help people imagine how much greater it can be. What could it look like? What would it feel like? What would it be like? And we just allow that whimsical to just come in and, and invite into the conversation. Transactional sellers are like, this is where we are and this is where you will be. Are you up for it? Huh? What? And the person's like, yeah, I guess so. Like, that sounds okay. Premium service writers get that person to believe in something bigger. And then we say, okay, now how do we make that happen? And we allow this creativity, this innovation to just evolve, but we cannot do that until we get them to dream first. Let your clients dream. Now, whether they choose to buy from you in the next 30 days or not is irrelevant. Once they get into dream status or they believe in what it could look like, it's really hard to accept anything less. Imagine going to a restaurant and having you going in and you smell like the most amazing steak and wine and you're like, oh, 
that is so amazing. And then you look at the menu and it is like, you know, this subpar selection and you're like, I, I, don't think I actually, what I really want is that. Like what I really want is what I just had a taste of, what I just smelt. Now I won't settle for anything but that. Help them to dream and they will end up setting you as the criteria. You are the bar and they won't accept anything less. Okay. Who else, or in brackets, what else are you considering? Now, if you are lucky enough to get engaged in some type of sales cycle, or you are just, just having a general conversation and you start to get your client on that dream phase, right? You know, what will your future look like or how else will you be able to achieve that, right? If you chose not to go with us or you chose to go down a different path, how else will you accomplish this and find out what their alternatives are? It does not mean that they're always comparing you to this company during this company. Now, let's be clear in my first example, and I talked about the two marketing agencies. Yes, marketing agency one versus marketing agency two. There are two different companies that I'm comparing to. One of them, and I honestly didn't even know what their budget was. One of them was down here. I thought they were going to be a lot more. The other one, I have no idea. I expect it to be up here. Now I need to compare and I might even throw in a third option altogether. But what if I didn't choose that? What if my other options were, listen, I can either spend in ads or I could invest in other things in my companies because there's a lot of other things I'm looking at invest in as well. I'm looking at bending a brand new learning management platform. We're looking at new payment solutions. We're looking at more um, e-commerce types of abilities. I only have so many limited resources, time, money, and energy, and our clients are no different. Money aside, ultimately the questions they're asking themselves is when I invest this dollar or I invest this hour, how am I going to make that back in some type of process efficiency or ultimately revenue back into my company? One of the reasons why we're spending more on marketing is because I want to see this dollar turn into $4 or $5 into lead generation. Now, I would not invest in marketing right now if I didn't know how to turn those leads into ultimate clients, right? Because we know how to take that $1 and turn it into $10, that is a well worth investment. If that $1 was only gonna turn into $2 or maybe $3, I would probably consider that and be like, is this really the most valuable investment I could be making at this point in time? Uh, the other thing I'm looking at is profitability and your clients are no different. Are you going to help make them more profitable? And if you don't know the answers to that, you need to plan this out, you need to strategize. Start picking someone's like, even just the option of being able to say it out loud is so valuable. One of the reasons why I love meeting with my team, number one, is a great time to, uh, touch point. But the other thing is when we start to talk about different plans, I also find, ins find inspiration because I'm like, as I'm talking this through, I'm like, the answer is coming to me. That's amazing. Have people like that in your corner. Have people like that in your tribe that you can just openly talk to. Find, find those people, whether those are coaches, consultants, or just a tribe that you can ultimately talk to with them. All right. Boop, boop, boop. Oops, we skipped one. Okay, why is that important? <gasps> <sighs> this is this is such a wonderful question. Why is that important? Because when people start to get into dream phases, we want to know not just what do they dream, but why is that dream important to them? What more will it do? The reason why this is such a good question is because it actually takes them down into a deeper level. Not just what will it look like. So we go from what will it look like? I want you to think of this like in terms of like where the thought starts. So the thought starts in the brain. This is what it would look like. And then we get into this, why is that important? Which is very heart centered, very emotionally charged. When people become more emotionally charged, they now move themselves into a buying phase. They're like, yes, this is where I want to get into. Yes, this is this. Anything less than this is unacceptable. Why is that important is so valuable. And when your client starts to tell you why that's important, be aware they may cry. Okay. Especially if it's like really meaningful to them. There's an old saying in sales when they're crying, they're buying. And it's not that I ever want anybody like crying while they're signing my contract. <laughs> oh, I don't want to do this. No, I don't want that. What I do want them to do though, is I want them to come back and reflect and be like, this was the most important decision I've ever made. Right. This was like, and it might not be a lot. It might not be a huge investment, but I want them to see the significance of this decision and the ripple effects that this small decision 
it's going to have on their entire business. When somebody goes ahead and signs on to become one of our KO Sales U students, I don't want them just to say, yeah, this is really important to me. I want them to understand the significance and the ripple effects. This is important to me because now it's finally going to move me away from having a job to actually having a company. It's going to allow me to now move myself into position of leader for my company. It's going to allow me to have like my second location, my third location, whatever it is, whatever that you, I finally can make that charity that I've always wanted to. I've always wanted to have a charitable investment. I knew I needed to make money in order to get this. And when I'm able to make enough money, now I can create that. That's important. I want people to understand that significance. I want your clients to understand that significance for themselves. Continue to dream and let them, why is that important? And why is that important? And how will that make you feel? Oh, Okay. When I was in sales, they would always talk to us about how to create like these like brilliant case studies. Brilliant. I'm going to put those in quotes. Brilliant case studies, right? You're going to do this and you're going to do this and you're going to show them like overall what their cost savings was. And even in times of recession, when we could show somebody how we could save them money, they would say, hmm, yeah, I think we still need to think about it which tells me something, right? Either I thought, number one, like they must be stupid. Like who turns down cost savings during a time of recession? But actually what it was, was that they were afraid that they would make a small term investment and it would ultimately make them feel worse. And the feeling of I'm going to feel worse stopped them from making that decision. Now, alternatively, this can actually flip because someone might hum and haw over an investment it's not a lot of money, but I'm not really sure. Like, and when we get, invite them to ask them, well, how will it feel when you're seeing the result? How will it feel when you're already creating that impact? How will that feel? All of a sudden the emotion starts to take over and the client says, oh, you're absolutely right. I would feel so much better when that happens. I, I would feel so much more empowered. I feel like the leader that I need to show up to for my team. That is the deciding factor. People will buy on emotion and justify with logic. Get them emotionally charged. Understand how that will feel. Invite those emotions and then people will buy. And finally, we, we get to a point where we close. Now, closing does not always mean that we're closing the deal but rather we're creating an invitation that we can continue this relationship. I'd also like to ask the question, was this valuable for you today? Before I leave a meeting, was, was the time you spent valuable? I want them to say yes, right? Maybe I'll even change that. You know what? This is how I do my proposals. I, um, sometimes what I do, a lot of people think that proposals are much more of a presentation. They're actually a collaboration. And oftentimes I will present my proposals in this format and I will actually change it as um as we go so actually i i like this question better was this valuable for you i like that question because it continues to invite the relationship and it continues to keep us talking because if a client says yes this was valuable for me i am more likely to get the next meeting and make sure you book the next meeting while you're there. Do not wait for an email exchange to come back and forth and be like, okay, great. Well, I'll touch base with you next week because next week comes and now I'm back in the trenches and I'm trying to just put out another fire, another fire. You are now live with your client. Get them to book the next meeting in the calendar while you are there. Ask them, was this valuable? Can we continue this relationship? Continue to get the invitation to move forward and the close will naturally happen. Okay. Do, do, do. But at the end of the day, work on your questions. If you need help on understanding your questions, contact Dale again. He has his, his um, link in the, the chat box. We're going to provide you a whole bunch of more information. In two weeks time, we're going to do another webinar specifically around phone calls, how to engage more people with phone calls. So you're, you, most of you are on our email list. If you're not on our email list, you are on our email list now just by subscribing to this webinar today, but ultimately find out more what it is. 
this is me today. Um, I am, I no longer work in corporate sales. I work on it in kind of like an arm's length because I train corporate sales people how to sell, but I also train a lot of entrepreneurs. I am LinkedIn's most influential sales leader to follow. I'm Success Magazine's most inspirational blogger. That is my third book, Sell More Faster. Um, I'm in the process of creating it as an audio book as well for those that you like it. Uh, if you follow our YouTube page, I just posted the first three chapters um, of me recording and every week I'm going to be posting some more chapters. So follow along as well. And I am Startup Canada's Female Entrepreneur of the Year. My gift to you, a sales strategy session. Go and contact Dale, get him booked in the calendar with you. Just let him know who you are, what you're doing, whether the time is right now or at some point in the future. Start that conversation today. Start that relationship today. Because if not now, when? When are you going to start working on connecting with your clients deeper and through more, uh, more conversations? Uh, and finally, why do we do this? Because this is our number one value with our organization. You can have everything you want in life if you help enough people get what they want. I hope this was valuable. I hope the examples I used were significant and they, they were meaningful to you because I want to create as much conversations and relationships with you as possible. And I'm going to leave you with this question because you are now officially all informal KO sales U students. Some of you, I saw Matt on here. Welcome, Matt, if you're still on here. Matt is officially uh, a KO sales U student. The rest of you are unofficial KO sales U students. So you will get the same question that we ask all of our students. What are you going to do today that is going to have a significant impact on your business? What is one thing that you're going to do? Education is not the same as application. You have learned a lot of different techniques and tricks and ideas to reach out to people, to start conversations and everything. What are you going to do with that information today? The ocean was created one drop at a time. Do something. Any action is better than no action. <gasps> Thank you all so much. We're ending right on time. If you have any questions, the chat is open or feel free to take yourself off mute um, and go ahead and ask it. I will stick on for another minute or two. Thank you all so much. I hope to see you all in two weeks. Two weeks, same time. Thanks, Kim. Great job. Oh, thank you, Michael. I appreciate that. We'll be chatting here in the next week anyhow uh, on with our other hats on. Wonderful. I'm excited for it. <laughs>